It was a tough hate weekend in Southeast Louisiana, Musso. LSU falls to Alabama 20-14 to in Tuscaloosa. And the New Orleans Saints fall to the Atlanta Falcons 27-25 to inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Atlanta, or inside the Caesars Superdome. I'm still doing that. <laughs> the Falcons have Old won. habits, man. They die hard. Yes, they do. Uh, Atlanta has won two out of the last three in the Superdome, which is rare in this series, Musso. And as far as this game goes, this was just terrible for three quarters. Like I said, really three and a half quarters. Uh, it felt a lot like the 2019 game that the Saints lost in the Superdome. They just came out flat. They lost a low-scoring game where they only scored a touchdown. They came, they came back in the fourth quarter. All the credit in the world to New Orleans defense and the offense because they did get going a little bit with Simeon and with Taysom Hill hill when he was in there but the saints defense deserves a lot of credit i think for getting the offense the ball back three straight times and the superdome was rocking i did not think atlanta was going to score on that last possession especially with the after what the saints did to uh, tampa bay last weekend and clinching the game but you have one of the craziest comebacks that i've seen in person erased in one play by one simple deep ball to Cordarrelle Patterson. And after that, you still had the last gas fumble forced by Marcus Davenport. After Sean Payton told his players to let the Atlanta offensive player score, Marcus Davenport did not listen. He took a gamble, and it almost paid off because he took that football away uh, from Cordarrelle Patterson on the following play. But unfortunately, nobody fell on the football. Young Wei Koo connects on a short field goal, and the Saints fall in a game that they were favored, in a game that, looking down the road, Musa, maybe one that they should have won, and hopefully one that does not hurt the Saints that much in the standings sean payton's yo-yo analogy continues to age like milk yes because this team is a yo-yo <laughs> it's i mean it's just you have lost to the panthers granted again you had you know you're missing half your damn team and coaching staff was a covid but whatever you lost that game they're not good by the way you lost to the giants and now you've lost to the falcons yet you've beaten the green bay packers and the tampa bay buccaneers it, it's just up and down up and down and i mean the comeback was great, but they shouldn't have even been in that position. There was no reason for the Saints to lose this game at home. They were better in every facet of the game. They're a better team in every facet of the game than the Atlanta Falcons are. And, I mean, I think you will probably see that play out differently in meeting number two later on down the road in Atlanta. But when you go scoreless in the first half like they did and drop five passes and just kill any momentum that you have on drives like they did, it's always going to be tough to come back. They ended up coming back, but ultimately it wasn't enough. If the Saints score, if they kick a field goal, if they have a, a touchdown in the first half, they might even say you have to be leading at the half. You just can't get shut out like they did. And the game's different. You win the game. Even as badly as you played offensively, the receiver room is just, I mean, it's bad. I know we've talked a lot about going back to that Sean Payton quote and the Mickey Loomis quote even from the offseason about them how much they liked their receiver room. You know, we like this group. But Sean Payton did it again heading into this game. I don't really care about your pro football focus rankings. I like the guys that are in there. And you have five drops in the first half. And, I mean, it's just it, – there is no number one in that group. And I understand. Obviously, you have Michael Thomas out, and that's fine. But no one has been able to step up and even get close to being the go-to guy. And it is – it's showing. It's yeah. showing. And those guys had to feel terrible because Sean Payton has been so confident in, in them. And like I told you before the show, man, I respect Sean Payton because he knows what the weakness on his football team is, and he does not care. He is going forward with what, with what they have. And it's just a killer, all the drops, and not just the drops, Musa, but the timing of them. Adam Troutman on a third down, you have a slant route in the red zone to where if you hold on to it, you either score and break away or you set up with the first down and you continue to have the momentum. But that was one of several bad drops by the Saints. And like Sean Payton said, not just receivers. Kamara dropped one. Troutman dropped one. And these are errors that you can't do. And the Saints are not extending drives at all. Three for 10 on third down isn't going to win you many football games. And as far as Trevor Simeon goes, the stats don't jump off the page. 25 for 41, 249 yards, two touchdowns, and zero interceptions. But obviously the drops affect that. And I thought early on in the game, Moose, so the early drops really prevented Trevor Simeon from getting in a rhythm because I think he's doing an excellent job playing within the framework of Sean Payton's offense. But players had to make plays. And eventually you fell behind, and it took away one of the great advantages that you had in this game, which was running the ball. The Saints were just being able – they were running – that first quarter, they ran it straight down Atlanta's throat. And that didn't result in any point, points, but – they ran for four and a half yards a carry in this game, but they only got to run it 25 times. They were down 24 to six. I mean, that, that takes you out of your game plan. That hurt. I mean, that is just a clear advantage that they had in the game, and you had to get away from it.
Mark Ingram continues to be a bright spot. Nine carries for 43 yards, not too shabby. Alvin Kamara, only 13 carries because, as you said, they were playing catch-up in a lot of that second half. But 50 yards, a touchdown, they're getting him going a lot more as a wide receiver. He had four catches, 54 yards in the game. Uh, Traquan Smith, I thought, made some pretty good plays. Uh, three catches for 53 yards. I think you pressed the wrong mute button, bro. I, pre I pressed your mute we button. Got I'm sorry about that. It's all, I know, I know, you, don't, I, I know you don't like Traquan Smith, but we got to give him yeah, some well, credit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Traquan had an okay game, man. He really did. <laughs> Three receptions, uh, 53 yards on four targets. He had a really bad drop in the game, but he's at least producing, especially after him and Jameis Winston were, were screaming at each other on the sideline. I thought he's bounced back and played a really good last two games. Deontay Harris, in, in a game where the wide receiver struggled, I thought he played really well. Six receptions, 52 yards, had it going in the return game as well, and he's an underrated player, Musso. Third year out of Assumption College, undrafted free agent, might be the best pure wide receiver on the team now, at least going forward, knowing that Michael Thomas won't be back, and he's going to be a huge part of what the Saints do going forward, and if the Saints accomplish their goals, get to where they want to go later on in the season, and hopefully the playoffs, Deontay Harris is going to be a big part of that. It's been fun to watch the evolution of his career in New Orleans so far. I mean, he came in just at first was just the return specialist. Like, that's all you were really going to get out of him. And look, that was very successful. A guy ends up uh, making a Pro Bowl in that in that role. But towards the end of last year, you start to see them. Uh, you start to see them feature him more in the offense, especially in that playoff game against the Bears. And you've just seen him pick right up, pick up right where he left off this season in that role and you're right he's becoming a weapon he's very underrated and he's somebody where you kind of really need to know where number 11 is at all times on the field because Sean Payton's always looking to scheme and get him the football especially in space I I wanted to pose this question as we wrapped up this conversation is it fair to criticize the Saints defense for this loss because obviously in the context they kept you in the game the first three quarters I'm not ignoring the whole rest of the football game but for somebody that prides themselves, as you know, the strength of the team, they were talking about uh, after the Tampa Bay game last week, wanting every game to be in their hands. It was in their hands. And at the end of the day, Musso, in three true home games, because I'm not counting the Jacksonville game as a home game, you had a chance to stop Daniel Jones and win the game. You failed. You had a chance to stop Matt Ryan with his best weapons being uh, Kyle Pitts, a rookie, and Corderell Patterson at the end of the game. You failed. But you come up big against Tom Brady. I'm sensing some major inconsistency here. And the Juice Boys, I don't think, are playing to the level that they want to play in these home games. That's yo-yo, right? That's what I said. I mean, that that analogy, Sean Payton tried, you know, we don't want to be a yo-yo. Well, I mean, you are. I don't know if it's... I thought they broke it after the Tampa game because yeah, up I mean, until then they were like alternating. It, they were alternating wins and losses until that game. I thought they had broken out of the yo-yo, but it's gone right back down. I, you can't exonerate the Saints defense completely from this loss. I mean, obviously that... You lost it on, on defense technically at the end there. But there were other things as well. I mean, look, you lost the turnover battle. You had 10 penalties for 74 yards in that game. It just wasn't a very clean game for the Saints. The defense did keep you in it ultimately for you to make that charge. I, I lean more towards the offensive struggles you had in the first half as what were your ultimate undoing. But no, I mean, look, you can always, oh, you scored too fast. Well, you had two minutes and 20 seconds or so left on the clock last week with Tom Brady with the ball. Your defense made the play. They didn't make the play at the end of the game this time. I would have honestly liked to have seen him just let them score on the long touchdowns. Let it, let him go. You got the ball back with 50, 48 seconds or so and one timeout, and your offense was on fire. Let's see if you couldn't go and, and, and you know make one last charge that way. But uh, no, I mean, it's, it's a team loss. You win as a lose, you, te you lose as a team. But So I'm not going to put it all on the defense, but you can't just absolve them because they kept you in the game. They did give up the last play there. Chris Jarrell in the Bayou Ford YouTube chat says Odell Beckham Jr. and Deshaun Jackson are both available. Deshaun Jackson, I don't believe, is officially signed up. with the Raiders but, yet. But, but it, the Raiders, uh, that's where he's heading, it looks yes, like. Yes, it looks like he's going to join the Raiders. And as far as Odell Beckham goes, uh, Sean Payton touched on this earlier today. He straight up said that they do not have the cap space to make that happen. And even if they were interested, I would not tell you guys about it. So it looks like the Saints are good on OBJ, at least for right now. So what you got is what you got then if you if you believe Sean Payton. And so far, I mean, he's been true to his word with that. It's just, I mean, they they haven't, you know, Kevin, they brought in Kevin White, brought back Kenny Stills. I mean, but they haven't gone out and tried to actually just solidify and improve that receiver position. And probably a lot of that's probably because, you know, they were all hoping on Mike to come back. And now you had the setback there with, uh, that derailed that. But they look like they're going to roll with what they have there. And that's... That's going to make for a long year. And look, 
We sat here on Friday, Mario, and talked about next week as well with the foul, with the Titans and how that looks like a much more winnable game without Derrick Henry. Uh, the Tennessee Titans looked pretty darn good last week, last night. Yeah, Jeffrey Simmons likes his status. So yeah, that 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 is not looking up. They looked pretty good. That doesn't. That looks like it's still going to be a really tough game this weekend in, in Nashville. Good way to put it. Just now, man, the Saints got what they got, and they got a five and three record after a twenty-seven to twenty-five L. At home to the Atlanta Falcons, New Orleans opens as a three-point underdog on the road to the Tennessee Titans.